December Sober, my family and I have been here in Shelton. After the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center collapsed, the EPA tested the rubble and declared that searchers didn't need protective gear. Now, hundreds of probably thousands of those 9-11 responders continue to suffer chronic breathing problems and other maladies. The Department of Ecology has found dangerous levels of dioxins in Oakland Bay and plans to spend millions to clean it up. But they state they can do nothing to try to prevent future contamination. We asked local officials how they could allow a project of this magnitude, which would adversely affect the quality of life in Mason County and could be so detrimental to the Olympic National Forest, and they told us to let the permit process work. It seems as if the government is not designed to be proactive in protecting the people and the environment. Rather, they throw money at the problems that occur after the fact. Now we have a Dodge that wants to build a power generating plant in Mason County, a plant that by their own accounts, we know will release dangerous gases, heavy metals, and ultrafine particulate matter into the air we breathe. I asked the Department of Ecology how they can allow this when we know it led to the degradation of Oakland Bay, and I was told that that wasn't within their jurisdiction. I asked the Department of Health who would speak on behalf of the citizens whose lives will be affected by the pollution in an already unhealthy county. I was told that it wasn't within their jurisdiction. Elected officials and government agencies continue to point the citizens to you, ORCA. ORCA's mission is to promote air quality and take actions that protect the health and welfare of people in the natural environment in ORCA's jurisdiction. However, it concerns me that in the annual report, you, Executive Director McNair, wrote that throughout this past year, we have reinvigorated our collaborative efforts meeting with the local jurisdictions, emphasizing our willingness to work with them to cite new businesses, thus streamlining, streamlining the permit process. How can you remain objective about regulation and enforcement with businesses that you're trying to help get permitted? How are you protecting the citizens as you try to expedite the permit process? Since you are the agency that our elected officials and our government agencies defer to, I appeal to you to protect the people and take more time to study the impact of the smokestack emissions. If you do permit this, pro permit this project, please, at the very least, require the maximum available capture technology. Please stay true to your mission and your stated vision that, quote, all individuals in Orca's jurisdiction, especially children and the elderly, can live, work, and play in a healthful and clean environment, free from the harmful and destructive effects of air pollution. And the next speaker is Connie Simpson. Hello, and thank you for holding this meeting. I'm glad to see so many people out, and I, I really hope that you have more people this afternoon that, that come also to ask their questions. I'm a registered nurse. I worked for 30 years with various uh, modalities uh, of patient care. And I can tell you, if you've ever been at the bedside or in an emergency room when someone comes in with a full-blown asthma attack or uh, other breathing problems, it is harrowing, it's uh, scary, and many times that person does not live. The elderly uh, are extremely susceptible to some of these respiratory diseases, and the and children who breathe more, they run, they gulp in air, they play, they are extremely susceptible to air pollution, as is evidenced by the American Lung Association and the American Heart Association reports that show everyone should protect the air of children and the vulnerable <coughs> elderly. I did not have asthma myself until I moved to Mason County. Now I take my respiratory treatments and take my asthma drugs, as do two of my grandchildren who go to school here. That's why I'm here, because I have a responsibility to say what I know, and what I know is air pollution is dangerous to the health of every living thing. As for slash burned in the woods, not much of it is left anymore. A lot of times it's used for hog fuel, it's used for mulch, it's used for particle board, it's used for mushroom compost, it's used for a lot of things. What is burned in the woods is not burned next to my house or in very populated areas. So that is not as big of a concern for me as maybe it has been brought up to be. A concentrated amount of 1.2 tons per minute coming out of smokestack is a worry for me. 
The doctors in Mason County, the doctors in Thurston County have written a petition that asks that we consider people's health when thinking about biomass incineration. I believe if it weren't for the government subsidies, we wouldn't be talking about it today. I believe it's a green rush, it's happening all over our country. And yes, there are 18 either existing or planning uh, biomass incinerators happening in Western Washington. Now they may not all happen and I hope they don't, but that is a correct number. And our little area is the highest concentration if both of the biomass plants are built here. And I have great sympathy for people who want to work. I've supported a family as a single parent. I know people need jobs, but there are jobs that won't harm your neighbors. I do not want to sell my health nor my grandchildren's health for 24 permanent jobs. You can build a plant and then we are left with it and you won't have a job after that. It's finished being built anyway. The power will not stay here. We don't actually have a real need for more electric power in Washington state. Hydroelectric pretty much supplies what we need. We have been asked not to consider hydroelectric as renewable and green, which is ridiculous. And there is legislation that is in the, the uh, legislature right now that would add it back in. So don't burn wood in this antiquated technology for a few jobs and then leave people breathing the results of it. It's not right. And why are we not having an environmental impact study? It seems with this much controversy, the politicians would be happy to have a fallback as they do the most thorough study to protect the health of the citizens of Mason County. So thank you very much for listening. I don't know if anyone's talked about the diesel emissions from the 200 trucks per day that will be driving through our towns and on our roads. But if you sit behind one of those at a stoplight and you have asthma, you notice it. And there'll be 200 of them going in, and who knows how many coming out with ash that will fly out of the backs and also pollute our air. I would like to know who tests the bathhouse filters. I would like to know how often the logbooks are checked and who does it. I would like to know if these filters ever fail. And is there a warning if they fail? I shouldn't go outside. If so I'd like to know from Orca how they will manage the pollution that comes out of the Adai smokestack. Thanks. Okay, the uh, next speaker is Rosalind Reed, followed by John Smith, who's the last speaker on the sign up sheet. Good afternoon, and thank you, Gordon and Fran, for uh, giving us this opportunity. I didn't have prepared statements because I wasn't going to speak today, but so far no one has covered what I want to talk about, which is a personal experience with pollution. I can appreciate the labor part of things, and I appreciate you all being here. My family's uh, labor, my two brothers retired as electricians, and I lost a brother-in-law to mesothelioma. He was a pipe coverer. And I was a member of PATCO, those of you who remember um, our revered Ronald Reagan and the air traffic controller strike. I was a controller at one time, so I know a little bit about that. I was a labor relations specialist for a, a number of years. Um, I think the biggest problem I'm seeing here is that so far, I think this plant has never been built, so we're dealing with something that's not real. I have not heard anyone else who has had an experience with uh, pollution like I have, so a lot of what I've heard today is speculation too. Um, about 29 years ago, my husband and I lived in underneath the um, shadow of the Asarco smelter, and it pumped out a lot of white smoke, so we didn't see any problem with that. Um, the house was $19,000, that seemed like a pretty good deal too. But unbeknownst to us, what was pumping out of that thing was uh, arsenic and who knows what else, because I'm not an expert in the area. I just know that um, it's something you can't see. Mesothelioma was something you can't see. Arsenic is something you can't see. There probably were other chemicals coming out of that. I think Gordon showed a, a slide earlier about the area that Orca covers. I think right next to it was Puget Sound. Um, 
uh, Pollution Control Agency, and they were the ones that were in charge of the ASARCO. The result of that was that even though they polluted the area, all they had to do was pay fines. Um, we, I guess I can explain what the situation was. Uh, my husband, instead of jogging and exercising, decided that he would build a greenhouse for me. And he would do it by hand with shovel and a wheelbarrow. And he dug an area that was 20 feet by 12 feet by 3 feet, all by hand, um, after work and on weekends not realizing that the soil there was pretty dusty. I don't know if the, those of you from out of town probably know about the, the north end of Tacoma by Point Defiance, the dead zone. Uh, bringing that dust and all of the arsenic and whatever else was in there, he ended up with peripheral neuropathy. And that was pretty devastating. So 29 years later, we're still suffering the effects of that. Uh, right now, he's had a second pacemaker put in because another result of the damage was uh, electrical failure, which means your heart. So I really think that um, I'm not as trusting of the federal government anymore because we were not protected from that. All we were told was to rinse our vegetables, while we didn't grow vegetables. Amen. So anyway, I just want.